Hello, hi. Um, I have another cool court case for y'all. Um, so uh, today we're going over Crawford v. Washington. Crawford v. Washington, two thousand and four. So um, this is a, this is a bit of a sequel to a, another court case called Ohio v. Roberts. Uh, Ohio v. Roberts held that um, hearsay, not hearsay, sorry, testimony is admissible in court if uh, if it's reliable. Um, that's that was the the holding. That's I, that sounds like I'm joking, but that's what it says. It says testimony, I and mean, that's like almost word for word what the opinion says. But um, yeah, so this is this is just the, the kind of the sequel to that. I haven't made a video on that video yet. On that court case yet, so just kind of want to fill you all in on that. So uh, Crawford v. Washington, uh, Michael Crawford was a man who was uh, stabbed, um, or sorry, wait, no, he stabbed his, uh, he stabbed a man that he claimed was trying to rape his wife. So he 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 claims someone's trying to rape his no wife, so he stabs the guy who's trying to rape his wife. That seems pretty reasonable to me. I don't know about you. That sounds like uh, pretty clear you know, lethal force, like recent, one of the, the lethal, I, I could, I could make an entire video on lethal force, but one of, one of the reasons is, you know, if a felony is about to be committed in your vicinity. So yes, that's very obvious, you know, he was, he would have been in the right. Um, and during Crawford's, uh, you know, uh, trial, the, the prosecution played, uh, a tape of his wife, um, in the recorded statement, the police described the stabbing, um, and the statement contradicted what Crawford said, and that, you know, he was stabbing in self-defense. Um, however, it was pre-recorded, so Crawford uh, could not cross-examine the evidence. Um, and this was justified under the Ohio v. Roberts decision, so the jury convicted Crawford for the assault. Um, he eventually claimed uh, that the, the playing of his wife's statement uh, was unconstitutional because there was no chance for cross-examination, which violated the 16th, the, the 6th Amendment in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to be confronted with the witnesses against him. Says the Confrontation Clause, um, the Sixth Amendment. Now, the state uh, Supreme Court uh, upheld the conviction, um, relying on Ohio v. Roberts, like I said. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> Eventually, he got to the Supreme Court. Actually, no, 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 this is actually different. Uh, he actually didn't appeal to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court appeals to him. Um, so there's, there's actually a certain, um, I forgot what the motion's called, I, I, I apologize, but where they ask um, to review the, a lower court opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know exactly how that works, if there has to, if they have to agree to be, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. But regardless, that's what happened. Uh, so anyways, um, so it was argued on November 10th, 2003, and the question was, does playing out of court testimony to a jury with no cross examination violate the sixth the Sixth Amendment's guarantee um, to the Confrontation Clause? I'm not going to read it all again. Um, so, in a unanimous nine to zero opinion um, written by Anthony Scalia, I love Anthony Scalia, that guy's my homie, my role model. Um, they said that yes, it, it is unconstitutional. Uh, the court sided with Crawford and ruled the Sixth Amendment's Confrontation Clause gives defendants the right to confront. And by confront, they mean cross-examine their testimony. This includes testimony that police gather and anything that's not, um, you know, like factual. So any, if you ask a person about something, that's testimony. Um, so by allowing the out-of-court testimony, even if it's reliable, um, it, it breaks the, the you know, confrontation clause and the Roberts uh, decision uh, departed from the original framers' intent. The court overruled Roberts. This is uh, it, 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 This is one of the few examples where a court, you know, got overruled. So Ohio v. Roberts is no longer law. Um, yeah. Now there was a concurring opinion, um, which agreed with every, you know, everything that they said. However, they didn't want to overrule uh, Roberts, which seems weird to me. How can you agree that it's unconstitutional, but then not overrule the thing that? I, I'm not really sure what the, I mean, I don't understand. At that point, just dissent. I, I, maybe I could read the opinion, but I'm not going to. I don't, I don't care nearly enough. At least not, at least not for this case. Um, maybe for some other time. For, for if, it, if it's like DCV Heller, I'll read all the opinions. If, if it's someone like this, no, I don't care. Um, not really. <laughs> uh, I'll read the majority at some point, though. I don't have time. 
but yeah, that's all. That's all I got for y'all. I, I think I agree. Very, very good opinion. Uh, you know, anything that weakens the state's good, and it's obvious that confrontation. I mean, it's it's interesting to me how much inspiration the Constitution takes from British common law, um, or English common law. Is it English or Brit? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, so I think I think that that's kind of it's it's my understanding that that's kind of what it meant. Uh, con- con- confronted. So it's pretty obvious that they intended it to be, you know, cross-examined. Um, although I, I do wonder, how, like, what did law, what did law really look like like back then? How similar was it to what we have now? It's a good question. I might look into that. Um, anyways, so yeah, yeah, okay, good opinion. <laughs>